I'd like to show you a few things about how I put together a website. The process probably starts with a pencil and pen, but I can't show you that stage. You can virtually design a website in Photoshop or Fireworks or GIMP or any other graphics program, and, and that's more or less what I'm going to show you now. Here is my front page for the website I'm going to create in WordPress and Genesis. It's got a logo at the top left here, it's got a nav bar, it's got a slider, these arrow buttons, they will move the slider on, and you click that to get, take you to a page. We've got three featured blog posts here and a footer. I've also done another page which would be more of a template to all the other pages. Of course the header and, and the nav bar are the same but we've got a sidebar here with a, an email capture form, some social media profile pages and some links to some blog posts and we've got a normal area here for content and this could be a blog post, it can be an about page, this is actually the about page. An important point to remember is that it will be responsive so if you view this website on a mobile or a tablet at the top you'll have the logo, underneath you'll have the nav bar and then the content will follow that and then the sidebar will follow that because it will be a, a narrower space. We're going to be using the Genesis theme on WordPress as the base for this website. The first size we're doing the design in is the main sort of size that you would view it in on a large PC or, or on a, a laptop and it's nice and wide this one. If you go into developer tools it's command option I on the Mac you get the magnifying glass and just if you hover over the header there, you can see what the width of the site is. It's 1,152 pixels. So I'll just show you a bit about the process of putting the PSD together. In Photoshop, Command N or Control N on a PC or File New. And then you want to make the Photoshop document 1,352 pixels. The height is irrelevant because you can change that as you go along and have a white background. RGB, of course, 72 PPI. The first thing you should do is I've made this 200 pixels too wide to give us a little space either side, is to put a guide in on 100 and then another guide right at the end, 100 before the end, and that is 1252. So there, and then all we have to do is to put everything in between these lines. So in the case of the logo, always better to do the logo in Illustrator, of course, for many reasons. The client might ask you to do some print design work, in which case a vector version of the logo will be needed. So we go back into Photoshop and when you paste that's command V of course, you paste a, an object from Illustrator, a vector object, into Photoshop, always paste it as a smart object. This means you can resize it to any size you want and it will never lose any quality. Put the logo up there somewhere, then you want to do the navbar, so you go for your horizontal type tool which is just the ordinary type tool or T on the keypad and here you just type the names of pages that you think will be on the navbar. So we go home. Now that we're on the move tool or V, drag it holding down Alt or Option for copying and shift as well, which constrains it to be either horizontal or vertical or 45. And then you've got another little bit of text for your next page, which will be ab about. So you go back to the move tool and repeat that again. And if you look in the layers palette, you'll start to see the page building up. Here's your background, that's white. There's your vector smart object, that's your logo. It's a good idea to rename these layers so you know what you're doing. And it's a good idea to order them so you put what's at the top at the top. I find that keeps things simple. And here you can move layers about, select them. Here if I select them all and with the move tool selected, then if I click that distribute button, that will distribute the pages equally, horizontally, which is what we want. Now I want to talk to you about fonts, because this isn't a very boring font at the moment and we want to do something with it. The best fonts for use on the web are Google fonts. So if you just Google fonts, they'll probably come up, or Google fonts, google.com forward slash web fonts. And here you've got categories you can pick serif or handwriting or sans serif. 
let's have straight ones. We've already got some nice fonts here for use on the web and these are totally copyright free. You don't have to pay for them or anything. All you have to do is, if you see one you like, go quick use and it tells you exactly what to put at the beginning of the CSS here and what to put in the CSS declaration. Now all the fonts in Google are available to download as well so you can use them locally. So this one's called Arimo so let's just Google Arimo download font and here you see it's at font squirrel you can immediately download the TTF and use that one in your Photoshop document. So back in Photoshop now I decided that I like the look of this font Signica, I'm not too sure how you pronounce that, and that has a semi-bold and a bold weight, and I'll make them all a little bit bigger, obviously, 18 pixels. Then you can change their colors to so that red color, and as you see, that gives you some sort of idea about how I created that nav bar. If you want to put a picture in, you just select all, which is Command or Control A, which gives you marching ants around the edge. Uh, copy, which is Command or Control C, and then back to your document and Command or Control V, pasting the image in. You know a sidebar's coming here, but you don't know whereabouts it is. Best thing to do is to go back to the Genesis sample child theme that we'll be using it to base the site on. Take a screenshot of that and then paste it in behind your document that you're building and then you can have a look where the sidebar starts and you can just draw a little guide here. The um, screenshot is here, I'll call it screenshot on the layers and then make it invisible by clicking on the eye icon and then you can see there are your borders so the sidebar is around here and the content area is here so you should resize the image so it fits in the content area and this gives you a better idea of how the website will look when you finish developing. If you wanted a background on the sidebar you just click the rectangle tool or U and this will give you a shape layer in the layers palette and you can just change the color by clicking on it and picking a color from the color picker. Another important point about the layers palette is the drop shadows. Let's say we wanted a headline here and we wanted a little drop shadow on it. You would do that in the layers palette by clicking on the FX icon down the bottom and choosing drop shadow. And the best drop shadows for web would be distance of one pixel, a spread of one pixel and a size of one pixel. Of course this would be a drop shadow on a lighter colour, but when you want a light drop shadow on a darker colour as we have here, blend mode should be normal, otherwise it won't show up, and the colour should be white, and then you get a slight, very nice white drop shadow, which works very well and can be converted to CSS styles. Now I want to show you a bit about the layers palette. I like to keep all my layers in a kind of logical way. So here's the logo. That's the old logo I showed you that was black. Of course, we'd throw that away by dragging it to the trash can icon. There's the nav bar. I put that all into a folder. We've got all the links for the nav bar. There I was playing around with an idea of putting it in a box, which I decided against. There's the slider. Of course, that's in the wrong place. It should be there. There's all the elements to the slider. I put in different images so I could see how it looked with other images that we might use in this slider. There, of course, are the text layers. And there's the button which has a shape layer with rounded corners beneath it. The rounded corners are here. If you click on the rectangle tool, you, you have a rounded rectangle tool underneath. And if you're wondering about these folders, I'll do a folder for the footer. Here is the footer, by the way. It's just a copyright line and a back to top link. So just click on that icon, which is to create a new group or folder. And then you can just select those layers and add it to that group so there's your footer and of course double click on it and give it a name this just keeps all your layers in order so you can mess around with the design and get it looking exactly how you want it if you're doing it for a client show it to them and see if they like it and then once everyone's happy you're ready to start developing okay so this is rob from robcubbon.com thank you very much for listening goodbye Thank you.